So living with Asperger's syndrome and being on the autism spectrum and doing daily life stuff can be difficult. I'm going to help break down some of those issues and some coping strategies which I've developed to help you along the way. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspery world. My name is Dan, I have autism, ADHD, and I make videos on this every single week. So if you're new around here and you want to learn more, remember to hit the subscribe button here on YouTube and follow this page on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Guys, what is going on? It's been a uh, ho diddly do getting around to these videos, but I'm so glad I am. So thank you guys for joining here and uh, you're amazing. Thank you for taking part in this journey. So Asperger's syndrome is an old kind of nomenclature for diagnosis. Like Asperger's syndrome stopped typically being diagnosed in the UK in 2013 and was replaced with autism spectrum disorder or ASD. And since then, not a lot of people use Asperger's as a term, but it's still diagnosed around the world. And it's still a term that a lot of people identify with. So we have to take into account and accommodate for those people. So living with Asperger's syndrome, which is what I was originally diagnosed with, Asperger's syndrome and ADHD, can have profound effects on your ability to understand communication. One of the main issues for me would be uh, when someone would say something to me verbally, I'd kind of not really understand the instruction. Or if someone said to me, hey Dan, can you go this, 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 and this, and go this way and give me directions verbally, I kind of get a bit like, whoa, like it was a bit far out. It was a bit too much for me to understand. And because of that, it kind of made me, you know, less likely to get a job in certain places because I wasn't able to communicate on the level that they wanted. Even though I was highly able to do the work and I can communicate, I just needed a different format. Now this comes down to how you communicate. Basically, I then told my boss in work that they, if they wanted anything from me to put it in bullet points and email it to me. And with my friends and my girlfriend, I said, look, if you want something, you know, to be really um, impactive in, in my mind and stay there, send me a text message with emojis in it or a text message of what you need. And then I will understand that a bit more because then I've got time to process it and typically sit down and understand it. It's all about finding the way to communicate that you're happy with. I mean, it could just be as simple as sitting down, playing video games and having a discussion at the end of the night because your mind is occupied in the video game. And then you'll be able to have a discussion with your partner or your friends or whatever. That is how you can try and overcome some of the issues. They're never going to go away, but some of the issues with communication for people on the autism spectrum. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is short term memory loss. Asperger's has with it short term memory loss. So people on the autism spectrum will have short term memory loss, but long term memory gain. So they'll have a great long term memory, but really bad short term memory to so be like, Dan, you know, people say to me, Dan, go to the kitchen and get me some milk. I'll walk through the door and I'll be like, okay, I have no idea what I'm doing. I've forgotten already. And this comes from the fact that your brain is so busy doing things and experiencing things in the moment. It's hard to kind of have those uh, small pieces of information that will stay in there. Typically, it's similar to when someone says, hey, this is an appointment next Thursday at 8 a.m. You have to come to this clinic to do X, Y, and Z. It's all well and good saying, I'll remember, I'll write it down, but you never will. So how do I overcome these things of future planning and future proofing? I use apps. Apps are amazing. If you have a smartphone with like Siri assistant on it or something else like, or an Alexa app, you can then talk to those smart home devices like the Alexa, like your Siri or your Google home um, pod and say, you know, Hey device, remind me to go to the clinic next week at 8am for X, Y, and Z. And it will make that in your calendar and alert you at that time. This type of tech, smart home technology tech, as well as voice first technology, which is basically like the Siri assistant and Alexa, these have changed the game. So now you don't have to kind of write something down because maybe you're dyslexic, maybe you cannot write, you know, um, or maybe you're forgetful. So you're gonna try and write it down. And by the time you've written a line like me, you'll forget. So when you get the digital assistant to sort that out for you, it changes the game and your life becomes so much more productive. My life has changed just crazy good, crazy good. Okay, so the next one is like shopping and, and doing life skills. Now, people on the autism spectrum will be a typically diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome will be maybe as independent as they possibly can be where they may own a house or a flat or, um, you know, they'll go do their own shopping and hang out with friends, do all those things. But if you take all those things and put them down into small pieces, like doing the laundry and stuff, these are all executive function issues, which can be mega issues for people on the spectrum. So learning how to you know, do your washing and do your laundry, learning how to go out and do the shop and make a list of all the things you need in your house. One of the ways in which I found to do this is to learn how the washing machine works, but then take a video of you actually using it once with somebody who's showing you how to use it, or find a video instruction of how to use your specific washing machine, and then keep that on hand to use every time you want to use the washing machine. Another one is when if you're out and about and you're going to go shopping and you want to make a shopping list, 
you can get a piece of paper and draw the picture of the thing you want, like apples or milk or whatever. Draw a little symbol because those symbols are going to make you remember what you need to get when you're out and you'll visually be able to see it. And people on the autism spectrum are not visual learners or visual thinkers. The same thing, I'd use emojis on, an emo on, on a notes app or I'd use an app called Bring, which is an app that's made specifically for shopping lists. And you can sync that with your Alexa as well, but it also adds a small kind of cartoon graphic to the item that you need to purchase from the store. They are lifesavers, and those three things alone will set you up for the best chance you can. Guys, if you haven't already downloaded my Autism Life Hacks PDF book, you can at autismhacks.net. I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.